We will now go through a detailed setup procedure which will include the fine adjustments when we finish install, uh, mounting the RADA onto the scope. The only tool you'll need is provided. It's a 332nd Allen wrench. You could use a Torx screw. It would be a number 10 if you choose to, to, use, to use it on, on the RADA. All these screws are the same size. So the first thing we need to do is to decide where we're going to mount it. The width of the universal base is one inch. So we need to have one inch wherever we mount it. So where would be the best location? Well, we want to keep both our eyes open, open when we use it. So we need to have it about the same distance from our eyes when it's mounted onto the rifle scope. We can't mount it here. It'll be an, inside our eyeball. We can't mount it here. It'll be too far and we'll see very little part of the circle. So about here, we'll basically put it here. So do we have one inch here? I could see by putting it, of course, that it didn't. And we have seven eighths. The reason why I use a measuring device is because it will help to make this adjustment. Because what we will be doing basically is moving the scope back inside these rings when they're still attached and then lift up the whole thing and move it the same distance forward, which will keep the eyepiece in the same spot in relationship to the rifle and to our eyeball. So our eye relief will not change. So seven eighths, we need at least one eighth it's better if we have a little more because then we can have space to mark a reference line on the universal basis lag here and on the scope. So when we have our final setup, if we take it off for storing it, we know exactly where to put it. And we have reference lines on top of the universal base here, which will give us the second reference point. And when we go to set it up next time, it'll be a cinch very quickly. So we need at least one eighth. The distances here between the peaks and valleys of the Picatinny rail are a little bit more than 3 sixteenths. The, the peaks are 3 sixteenths almost precisely. So for our purposes, since the scope rings already sit onto the Picatinny rail, all we have to do is just make sure we lift them up both. So if we raise the distance by increments of 3 sixteenths at a time, we're set. So we measured it. Now we have to uh, loosen this up, move it back, and then loosen this and move it forward. So what we do is then, oh, you need the other tool, which actually came with your mounting rings. So when I said that you only need this for the rat up, I wasn't lying, <laughs> but hopefully you have that because it came with your mounting rings. If you don't, most of the uh, machine screws that come with these mounting rings are uh, number 15 torque screws. So I like to use a screwdriver to do that because then you can count the amount of turns that you made because I suggest that you turn, loosen it the same number and then when you go to tighten it, all you have to do is tighten it the same number and then use a torque wrench or same strength so all of them are tightened the same way. But before we move it, before we loosen anything up, in order for you not to have to zero it in again, Make yourself a reference mark both on the um, lower leg or I mean, yeah, the lower part of the scope's mounting ring and a corresponding line on the scope. So then when you move it, you have a reference point and this will not get twisted and you will not have to go through resetting it up. If you do, make sure you have something like this or a level to use to make sure that it's, that it's level. The rifle has to be level first, it gets clamped, and then this gets leveled. Hopefully with these marks you won't need to do that. So, 
Now we've marked it and we take our 15 Torx screw and loosen it. You look at it here, it's facing me and one, two, three. Why three? Because I found out that if you loosen it two, it catches a little bit and maybe on your scope it will not catch a little bit, but it catches a little bit here. So that way I might end up twisting it. So I just turn it three times and it's loose enough, but still stays in place. One, two, three. And the same with all of them. Two, three. Takes a little bit of time, but if you do it right, you don't have to worry about it. It'll come together the same way. See now it's not a flat that's pointing at me, it's one of the ridges, so it's the ridge. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, that one already. Listen, that one. One, two, three. Three. Okay. Now, we move it in 3 16 increments if we have that distance, and it looks like we will. I'll move it in two uh, increments of 3 16 So, ah, uh, it's still catching. Maybe I counted four. So, one more. One. One full, one additional full turn. <sighs> this is hard work. <laughs> okay. Can move it and then measure it. See if I added the right amount. Okay, one, two, three, so one sixteenth more. Okay, for the demonstration, to save time, I just moved the rifle scope forward beforehand to show that there wasn't enough space and how to create the space by loosening this up, moving the rifle scope back, and then when you have enough space, you will then tighten it up. Now, the rifle scope is back into the position where I like it. You, however, at this point, we'll loosen these up and move it the corresponding distance, two positions forward. Now, before we tighten them up, we have the distance, we need to make sure that we have kept our reference point. So there is the, that line, I put it against it flat, and actually, it's right against my line. So, good. So now I can tighten them again, and when I tighten them, I go crossways. A lot of people don't go crossways right away, they just first tighten them the same number, and then when they torque, they go crossways. But I like to go crossways again, anyway. So now I have to tighten it four each time. One, two, three, four. The rest of the torque will take one. Two, three, four. If you want, you can quickly check and see that you are still in the same position real quick. Yes, okay. 
Sometimes it could move, so it, it doesn't hurt to check. Are we having fun yet? One, two, three, four. As I'm sure you know, if you actually take care of these little details the first time, you don't have to do them again because you did it right the first time. So, you know, even if it takes a little bit more, do it. Okay, now the middle ones. By the way, some of these mounting rings will only have two screws here on each side instead of three. So, but you get the idea. It's, you know, the principle is the same. Okay, if you have a torque wrench, then use it. This one is set for the specific weight or strength that was uh, provided by the manufacturer of these mounting rings. And just because I don't want to have to find out later that something happened, just one more time. Did I get this right? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So now we have the space. This is where it mounts, and I recommend that you protect it somehow. I like to use dry lube, and the reason is because it's easy to put on, it's easy to take off. It does protect it. If this looks shinier than this, it's because I put dry lube here and I've put it on many times, hundreds of times. If you want to physically protect it, you can get a square like this for a few pennies at a project store or a hardware store. It's a very thin vinyl and you take the white off and you stick it on. And I recommend that you, when you cut it, that you measure it and you make sure that it doesn't overlap, that it's actually a little shorter than the full turn because if it goes over, you have created a hard spot where you, even when you start setting up, you will feel it and it will bunch up. The, the, the main reason why I don't use this is because I, I, I'm not thinking about ever selling this. You know, I'm going to give it to my son when, when I go to the better hunting grounds in the sky. But, <laughs> um, so, but the reason why is because when it comes, the time comes to take it off, if you want to take it off, it's, it's a pain. You have to basically shave it off and then use acetone to take the, the glue off. But even after having done that a few times, you can see that there is no damage here. The universal, so, so I take this dry lube, I put a drop on it and smear it around. And this is dry Teflon. I put some on the clamp. Now, a quick word, this is a 30-inch main scope tube, so this is a 30, um, I mean 30 millimeter. So this is a 30 millimeter ring or clamp or strap, whatever you call it. We have one for one inch, 30 millimeters, 34 and 35. It co we cover all the scopes available in the world today. If somebody comes up with another size strap, with another size tube, we can make the strap. Just let us know if, if we don't find out about it before you. So the strap will go, will end up being underneath and this on top. So now you might think, well, I'm a left eye shooter, I'm a right eye shooter. The way that we designed it, it doesn't matter because it can go like this or like this. Okay? So, you can take the red dot scope out if you like, put this underneath, and then the strap will go on top. The easiest thing to do is to put the screws in first. Now, if you look down here, you will see that there are two different size screws. 
a short one and a long one. The short will go from the universal basis clamp to the universal base. The long screws all live here. One, two, three, four. And they are the ones that hold the red dot scope in the standard clamp assembly. Okay, so we take the universal base now. We mount it underneath. We hold it underneath with one hand. Place this down with the other hand. And just push the screws a little bit and you'll feel them falling into their holes. You take the Allen wrench and start all of them first. One, two, three turns, whatever you choose. Just get them all started. A few turns, see, it's there. Everything is loose right now. You could tighten this a little bit so it doesn't flap around. Now, if you, if you have another screwdriver, it makes quicker work of tightening it, then you can do that. I'm doing it with my right hand, even though I was born left-handed because it's easier for you to see it that way. So we have it tightened enough so it stays, but it can still turn. And then we will place the red dot scope in here and get ready for our adjustments. Before we do that, I just quickly want to show you how this is put together. Our friends at Phipps and Bird in Richmond, Virginia did a fantastic job in executing this design. So when everything is clamped, the red dot scope perfectly parallels your scope, your rifle scope. All the surfaces here are square to one another and they're perfectly machined. Now, on this side we have, I'm sorry, we'll start here. On this side we have a boss and that's what everything pivots on. On this side we have the hole, which is the receiver for the boss. If I put them in like that without the lock washer and tighten it, I mean just put it in, they touch one another, but at that point this surface of the boss does not touch the inside surface. This lock washer takes up that space. When you put that in, then you put that in, the boss into its hole, and you tighten it completely, all the surfaces from the inside of the receiving hull to the lock washer, the outer side of the lock washer, to the surface of the boss, and this surface right here are perfectly touching each other. So it's a very positive connection. The reason why I told you all this is that all you have to do to adjust it is to make one eighth of a turn. It's roughly what I measured it to be. And you can move it, but it stays in position. Then when you finish making your adjustments, you have very little bit to turn. If you over tighten it, you'll probably break that before you'll strip the threads. So don't be, don't be a Goliath. If, if, you, if you break it, uh, you're on your own. Uh, no, no, we have, we have some extra straps um, lying around here. So, um, but you, you don't need to over tighten it. You'll see when, when, you, when you start playing with it. So now what we have to do is make the adjustment so this matches the distance between our eyes, also called interpupillary distance or IPD. So if you hear me say IPD, it's the distance between your eyes, interpupillary distance. So now we come around to here. And what I suggest you do it somewhere outside or inside looking out at a target about half a mile to a mile, maybe even two miles away. It's, it's better that way because it will cover all distances, basically. And don't overlap the red dot over the crosshairs. But first, we adjust the distance. So you find a target in the distance that is a, a, an easily identified target from a distance that you can see here. And so you are sure that you're also seeing it here. And you put that target in your crosshairs. So you have the target now in your crosshairs. And now you start moving the red dot scope within the clamp like this. And also up and down. And like this. Keeping the red dot scope horizontal and vertical with its adjusting knobs. 
but you can move the universal base up and then open this up a little bit. And the idea is that while you see you're targeting the crosshairs, you also see it in the center of the red dot scope. We didn't turn the dot on yet. What we're trying to achieve while looking through the crosshairs is a tunnel effect where the walls of the outside of the scope, of the red dot scope, are equal thickness uh, to the lit up picture that you see in the distance. It's lit up because the light comes in. I mean, it's not actually um, artificially lit up. You just see a dark tunnel and a light. So now we have both the crosshairs and the red dot scope centered on the target. So you can now just tighten this a little bit more, just a little bit, because it's not final yet. And you can tighten this, the base, universal base. Just tighten at this point only two of them. So it doesn't move much. And you tighten this a little bit more. Now we turn the red dot on. Now, again, I, I want to, I'm going to mention it a few times because it really is, is important. You can see that the red dot scope is up and to the left of the main tube right now. And I like to keep the relationship between what I see, since both of my eyes are open, the same. In other words, when I place the red dot on the target, if I'm looking through both at the same time, for a, for a moment or a few minutes, depending on, on each person, you will see both the red and the crosshairs at the same time. In my case, the red dot will appear up and to the left of the main of the target. And that's the way I like to keep it because I don't want to risk getting tempted to pull the trigger when the red dot is on the target. Because the bullet will actually come to rest where the crosshairs are. So I don't overlap the red dot with the crosshairs. So I look through it, oh, turn the red dot on. And of course, you know that if it's a very bright day, you need to put it on 11. If it's, a, if it's a, a dark day or it's almost night, you just put it on one and you, in most cases, it will be on it already because if it's a decent red dot scope, it came from the factory zeroed in, I mean not zeroed in, but in the neutral position which is the center of the red dot scope. If you need to move it a little bit, then you take these knobs off, I mean the knob caps off, and you will discover, if you didn't know, that inside are slots for adjustments. You can use a flat screwdriver like this, which can reach in here and here, or you can use a penny or a dime. Um, those two coins will fit very nicely here. A, a word about adjusting these. Clockwise, or this way, if you don't have a an old watch, will pull the dot up towards the knob. The same with this knob. If you turn it this way, it will pull the dot towards the knob. You turn it this way or counterclockwise, either this one or this one, it will push the dot away from the knob. Just the same as your rifle scope. If you remember working on that, to bring the crosshairs up, you turn the inside knob clockwise. To turn it, to bring it down, it's counterclockwise. It's the same principle. So play with it until when the red dot or red cross, if you have one in here, is on your target. It appears in the center of your view here. If you zero it in at a certain distance, let's say half a mile, and then you're, you're going to shoot at something closer to you, 200 yards away. Don't be surprised to see the red dot a little closer to the center of your picture here. And that's because these two really are in parallel. So don't worry about it. You don't need to adjust it because if you, so it's perfectly every time for every distance. 
the thing is that once you set it out for, um, for infinity, half a mile to two miles, wherever you place the red dot on, if it's not dead center in your hair, crosshairs, it will be one or two points away, not even. It, it will be visible immediately, very close to the center. So I don't go through readjusting it every time I shoot at a different distance. It, every time I put the red dot on, it's still, after all this time, it still amazes me that I see it in the crosshairs. It's in the center. Or if it's on a spotting scope, I see it in the center of the spotting scope. Or if it's in a camera, I see it in the center of my long range lens. Okay, so this basically finishes the process. Now you tighten everything. You tighten the universal base, base of screws completely and you tighten all these and you're done with the setup. A little word about marking. I have one of these marking pans that has silver on one side and gold on the other. The reason why I like that is because my wife and I have different IPD, interpupillary distance. We have friends who have different IPD. And if they want to use my equipment as well, I want to be able to mark it for myself so I can set it up quickly and she can use another setup. So I take this silver spot and I use it for myself. And now you don't have to mark it because the reference points here are such that you can write yourself one long line, one shorter line, you know, or one and a half, whatever. You just write it down, you know that's yours. But what I do is I just put a silver spot here and that's me. When she marks it, she will put it somewhere over here and that's hers and that's the gold. Now I also mark a spot somewhere on the rifle and for you to see it, let's say you just touch it on both surfaces the universal base and the rifle scope and now you can take this off put it away and when you put it back in you know exactly how to set it because you just put it here and tighten it you could do the same here you could also put a spot here and then you know that that is where that should sit and it can check itself when you put it on if this is lined up and this is lined up 10 years from now you'll put it on again and it'll be set for you still. So at this point we're done and I want to tell you that if you have any questions, any problems, difficulties, or if you're curious about anything, please do not hesitate to contact us. We will work with you. And again, thank you for purchasing the Rata. Enjoy.